Do you know who I am? Thriller. City. You might need a theme song for your shit. Check this out. Turn it out. Now watch it. See then. JackThriller.com. We creep in. Snoop Dogg to the left. Jack Thriller to the right. JackThriller.com. Do it all night. Hit the website. Hit us up real quick. If you're trying to get worked up with a bad super bitch. All right. And we're back, man. Give it up for y'all selves. Come on now. Come on, man. New Jack Thriller City. I'm your host, Jack Griller. Uh, T-Rex, how you feeling, man? I'm feeling real good. Okay, okay, man. There we go, there we go. We on the check-in. Yo, let me uh, introduce my co-pilot for the day. Um, my first blood cousin. Uh, uh, he is the godfather of the crank movement. Y'all give it up for Lil Playboy. <laughs> and from the One Thing About It podcast, y'all give it up for my player partner, my homegirl, my friend, a money talks. And our guest this evening, oh man, she's a superstar. She is a Philadelphia legend. But yeah, we claiming her in the A, man. Magic City All-Stars. She put on for our city, they city, wherever she at. She always showing out. And she know, she know how to do the hokey pokey, turn herself around, every <laughs> dance in the goddamn world. You know what I'm saying? She can shoulder lean and she know how to dance, though. She can stank your leg. All that shit, butterfly, all that pumps and the bumps. We like the girls with the pumps and the bumps. I'm talking about the one, the only, Gigi motherfucking McGuire! Hey. That's one hell of an intro. Hey, man, you deserve it, <laughs> man. Miss Lip Service. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, man, how you feeling, girl? I'm good. I'm blessed. I'm happy to be here. I'm, I'm so happy to, uh, like, uh, 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 last time I, um... I was watching some things and whatnot. You, 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 uh, you engaged now? Well, you, not you anymore. You off the market? No, it's over. It, oh. You're grand, divorcing nigga already. Grand, grand opening, grand closing. God damn. Yeah. You love them and leave them? That's what you used to do? Listen, I mean, I wasn't getting what I need, so I had to make some changes and delete myself from the equation. Oh, oh, oh God. Yeah. Wow. So wow. that's what happened. That. Let me ask you something. Yes. What do you need? They, they inquiring minds want to know. I don't every, need every much. Every nigga in the world I don't need wants much. to know what you want. I don't need much. I need I need reciprocation. I need honesty. You know, I need time. And you know, those are things that I just wasn't getting. So this, those are those seem simple enough. I mean, to some people, it can be quite complicated. Clearly. Okay. So yeah. So okay, I think I'm asking you the wrong shit. <laughs> Cause you know how here, here we go. Here goes here goes nothing. You ready? I'm ready. What's your type? Hmm. Is you is you fighting for the same nigga everybody else is? No. Or you, I don't want him. you fucking with everybody that wanna fuck with you. That no. like you. No, I'm actually not really fucking with anybody, and maybe that's the thing. I'm very picky. You know, I need a man, I need an authoritative figure. Authoritative I need a authoritative figure. You look yeah. like, like Joe Clark? I need <laughs> I just need somebody that know what they do and know what they want, know what they need, know what they got, know what they working with. And I don't, I don't like confidence is key. Confidence is sexy, you know. So I need somebody that got their shit together. Period. Okay, now that's a good question right there. What is having your shit together? It's not still trying to figure it out. Whatever your shit is, have it together. Okay. Know what you're doing with it. Okay. Know where you're going with it. Okay. You know, you could be on your way there still. Mm. But just know where you're going. Okay. I don't need nobody that's trying to figure it out. What's an example of not having your shit together for those who think they got their shit together, but you know what? They might be still figuring it out. But you setting the record straight right now. Hmm. Because so she about to tell you what give you an example. So you know what I'm saying? You know if this you, applies to you, stay out her face. When you still out here rolling the dice. Mm. You, you know, talking about like really rolling not dice? Not really rolling dice, but oh. when you out here just, you know, trying shit and trying shit, trying to see what stick. You okay. know, you got to know what you're doing. You got to have a plan. You got to have some goals. You got to go for them and stick to them. So you can't, See them out. you can't be with a new rapper. No, no. They got to have their foundation you gotta, yeah. and build on it. Because guess what? Anything built on the foundation this week is going to crumble, honey. There you go. The foundation got to be strong. Okay. And then we can build on that and stand on it and we can jump on it, fuck on it, stump on it. Oh, God damn. You know what I'm saying? We can get it popping. Oh, shit. But it got to be, the, the foundation got to be strong. Got you. Yeah. Got you. Yeah. You feel like it's hard to find somebody, though, that's comfortable with what you do because, like, on lip service with Angie, yeah, you talk about sex and you're really yeah. open. And I feel like 
That can be intimidating for men. It is intimidating. I'm not men. intimidated by that. When you be talking about that booty hole, it's very, it's and very intimidating. Eating a nigga, out, uh, I'm not intimidated. I'm like, hey, pick me, me. pick me. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, in the back. Yeah, it's very intimidating. Um, I can honestly say that I have found over the years that I intimidate men, and I don't do it on purpose. But I mean, you know, I'm gonna give you what you're getting now. This is what you want or not? No, seriously. Because a lot of people don't have their shit together, so and it's easy to spot it when you do. Exactly. So people step to you, and you already got what's going on with you, yeah. and you work in, and then yeah. they get, they be like, oh, well, yeah. I thought I had my shit together. I don't. I clearly, I don't. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I, 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 I can see that. Mm-hmm. Men think that they're really open about sex and like a sex talk, but they're really not. Men are well, not. I think what? it's when it's coming from a woman, they're not comfortable with it. Because men, see, this is the thing with sex, right? Men. It's the truth. Men love sex. Men need sex. Men want sex. Men want sex from women. Yeah, but do. when we want sex and we need sex, we all types of sluts and whores. What it's is a different it? story. Do you want no, me to fuck not. or not? No, you want to fuck or not? No, you like, not. Like, are we fucking or not? Because we yeah. have, pro- listen, contrary to popular belief, we want to fuck the same amount as y'all do. We want sex too. Really? We want, yes. We want to be stimulated. Okay. We want to get that itch scratched. We want to come, you know, we get horny. We want to do it too. When do you be horny? All the time. Okay. Are you, are you horny now? <laughs> no. Okay, gotcha. This morning. This morning. I took care of it, though. Gotcha. Okay. Is this an age thing, or is something more like uh, I think all it's, women? I think it's all women, but I think it takes a woman to get to a certain age to understand that that's what's happening. You know, you have girls that go through their whole phase, and you have girls that are stuck on this one guy because he gives her good sex, but he's fucking up her life in every other aspect, you know? And until you figure out, like, okay, my, this is what my body is telling me I need, then maybe it might be an age thing. But I'm a grown ass woman, so I understand it. I like grown ass women. What, what <laughs> is a whole phase? What's the definition of whole phase? You know, they say when you just fucking because you want to fuck. You know, you might not be committed to anybody. You might have a couple situationships. You might have Everybody a little roster. Whole phase is different. You know, some some go through it in 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 college. Some go through it in their thirties. You know, some never go through it. You might have more than one. You might have multiple whole phases. Every time you move to a new city, it's a new whole phase. Oh. Oh, so. <laughs> you know you, how they say your body. You re You hit that reset. Hey. You re Re-hocated. Re-hocated. I like that one. Rehocation. <laughs> Hashtag rehocation. Mm. Mm-hmm. I can dig it. I can dig it. Yeah. No, definitely. Okay. Uh, yo, so let me ask you this. Um, do you prefer Philly guys to Atlanta guys, or w- w- what's the difference? Oh. Um, Do you need a nigga with a beard? No. Uh, uh, or can you? I don't. You, uh, yeah. Are you I, like if, a nigga I, with, if I have to choose, I'm gonna choose a southern man before I choose a man from. And why is that? But southern hospitality. Show sure no. You know, men men here seem to know they was raised by their mamas and their grandmamas, and they know how to treat a woman. Mm. Versus women up there that were raised by their mamas and grandmothers, they was in the house by themselves putting hot pockets in a toaster because mama was out doing her thing. Mm. Grandma mm. wasn't around. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So it's a different, you know, you are who you, you are, what you eat. You are in your environment. You are what you are raised by, right? We love our mama's cooking because we ate it every day, mm-hmm. right? So you're going to follow the practices that you were raised by, and that's how you're going to move on to be a man. Philly men, mm, not so much. And I, I learned that moving here. Mm-hmm. Moving to Atlanta, I learned the difference in the Southern man and the way they treat their women versus up north and, and just... I think the further north you go, the more feminine the men get to. Ooh. Period. That's fire. Pew, pew, pew. That's that's just the <laughs> truth. She, she chose violence. Yeah, she did. I'm, I'm from New York, and the men there want to be treated like women. I'm the, they don't they don't want to come up to you. They want you to buy them a drink at the bar. I mean, that's just what. I've it is. learned that New York men can be mama's boys. Shots fired. Yeah, New York men, and they're not as open minded. Mm. Let's get right to they're not as, they're not as open-minded. When you say when open-minded, what do you mean? Well, for example, I was with someone um, for a very long time who really didn't understand me being an entertainer. Uh-huh. And for that reason, I ended up quitting. But um, he just didn't get it, you know? I get it. I just Southern want you to know I get do, it. I do get it. Yeah, you know? Do you feel like it's harder dating now or back then when you were dancing? Now, I stayed with it in a relationship back then. I was never single. I was always out of one and right into another. Um, before 60 Day Fiance, I was single for, what, a year, right? Before that, I was single for two years in a relationship for a year and a half. Um, my longest term relationship was for 11 years. And here we are. I'm 11 single years? Again. Mm-hmm. Was that the wow. one you were in when you were? You're saying, like, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. And he didn't want you to dance anymore? Mm-hmm. 
Mm, so you quit? Yeah. You, you quit for a man? I did. I quit for the Platinum MX that I got in the mail the next day. Okay, that'll do it. That'll do it. I quit for that. I quit dancing for that. That makes sense. I quit dancing for less. <laughs> you still have that um, MX? I don't. I, I recently um, parted ways with the MX. You should have kept the card and just kicked the man to the curb. Oh, well, I wish it worked that way. Yeah, you know how that shit goes. <laughs> Come on, you know how many cards you didn't count. Come on now. Yeah, I, 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 I ain't balling like that, man. I, I ain't I got the platinum worked. Amexes. I wish it worked that way. Yeah, I, I, I um, and then gave a girl a, a cash app card before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't refill that bitch. Access to the Chime account. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> just as simple as that right there. When the money ran out, we did too. Mm. Hey, man, speaking of the money, legend has it, right? Lil Wayne gave you your name. Yes. Did he show you the money? Wayne showed me the money. Yeah. And not in a way where he just was like giving me money. Yeah. But I would make money when Wayne came to the club. That's, that's so dope. So Wayne would come to G5 when I worked there. He would come to Magic City when I worked there. You know? That's dope. Who was the best tipper when you were at Magic City? Um, Jeezy. Mm. So the legends is true. Jeezy. <laughs> Jeezy P. Yeah. Y'all know okay. P. 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 Quality control. This was before quality control. Yeah. He was still in the streets. What? Okay. Yeah. P. Um, Carlos Rogers. They used to play for the Redskins. Yeah. Him and Rugs and them used to come in the club all the time and throw it up. God damn. Gucci used to come in the daytime and throw it up. In the daytime? Gucci would come for wings and what, get What do you spend in the daytime? Five to ten. Eat some yeah. wings and keep it pushing. That's a, a yeah. five to ten. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 <laughs> That's how my lead. I, I, sure. I'm a oh, Pac-Man oh, Pac yeah. Jones. How can I leave out Pac-Man yeah. Jones? Pac-Man Jones would come with and spend yeah. $50,000. I've heard yeah. the stories. Yeah. I've yeah. heard the stories. Pac-Man Pac Jones actually married a girl out of Magic City. Shout oh, out to Tish. Yeah. They're still married <laughs> to it, it makes sense to me. Yeah. It almost happened to me a couple times. Yeah. Pac-Man Jones married Tish. I know um, you spoke on, you know, going back and forth through Magic. So I wanted to know... Uh, who was your favorite DJ you ever worked with at Magic? DJ Nando. Hands Nando. Down. Nando. Hands down. Rest in peace to Nando. Yeah. Nando is the blueprint. Yeah. There, let me tell y'all something. So I'm currently, well, I'm currently in the process of doing the Magic City documentary. Mm -hmm. We're Word. actually in post-production. And I learned, so I actually narrate the entire three-part documentary. That's big. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Come on, you know, yeah. Come on now. Thank you. Push the button, man. Thank you. Push the button. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. And so I learned so much during the production of this documentary. It's actually in um, post. We're being um, shopped to all of the majors. There's a little bidding war brewing. And um, I learned so much about Nando. I want to share something I learned with y'all about Nando. Um, if you don't mind. Nando is the reason why we have Magic City Monday. Mm. Nando. Everybody think it was BMF. It was Nando. This is a black history moment right here. A black history moment. Moment yeah. in Magic City black history. Wow. Atlanta history. So okay. basically, Nando was a bar bat, and he worked himself into the DJ booth, and they gave him the slowest night of the month, of, of the week, Monday. which was Monday. And he was so good at what he did that when BNMF would be in there every single day, they started really making sure they was there on Monday because they was fucking with Nando. And Nando grew Magic City Monday. BMF, of course, grew mm -hmm. Magic City Monday. And then Jeezy and all of that. And then here we are, all these years, 20 years later, we are still fucking with Magic City Monday. Oh, man, rest wow. in peace, Nando, yeah. man. Rest in peace, Nando. That's my Wow. Name. Yeah. And, and also, another reason why I got to give it to Nando as my favorite DJ is because Nando was the DJ that was DJing the night I won the Amber Tonight contest. Mm. Nando played Want to Be Certain Something for my set. I used to strip to that. <laughs> oh. All bullshit aside. <laughs> I'm mama dead. say, mama say, mama say, yes, we got that in yeah, time. Yeah. And let me tell you. I was tired as hell after that motherfucker right that's there. A, that's like an eight minute song. Yes, yes. So, that was the stupidest shit you could ever do. If well, you were quick story, as a, as a female who was 110 pounds in an A cup, Okay. Who had never really been to the South. Gotcha. Didn't know how to dance like these Southern girls. Okay. You know, I ain't little I ain't had an ankle thing together just quite uh -huh. yet, right? Uh -huh. And um I was I was intimidated. These girls were sticky thick with thighs, with thighs and butt, and mm -hmm. and they was doing all this moving and shaking, and yeah. I just Do you know couldn't everywhere. really get but I have a technical dance dance background and I know how to really dance. So I went in the DJ booth and Nando was there and and I was like, I'm nervous. Like, I don't really, I'm doing this contest because I need the coin, but I don't really know this music. And he's like, well, what do you dance to when you did dance? And I told him, Michael, Janet, Tina Marie, Prince. And he was like, I got you. And I got on stage. Dun, 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 dun. And 
I won the amateur night contest. How, now, Whoa. when you on stage, when like, okay, this what I when when I was on stage dancing and want to be starting something, I'm doing the Michael Jackson and shit. I'm moonwalking and I'm ticking and shit. Mm -mm. <laughs> All that mm -mm. shit, doing all this, mm -mm. Th that's not what you were doing. No, I no. was giving grace and poise. I okay. was giving, you know, I was, I danced at white clubs. So I was giving like the hair and the twirls and the pole tricks and the splits and the, but I still gave, you know, a little of what I could do with twerk. my A cup and my little yeah. 110 yeah. pound booty. Mm -hmm. But you know, it wasn't giving this, but um, I'm, Listen, it was different. While I was, it was something that they had never seen. Right. And Big Magic's exact words was, "I need to see that on my stage every night." He literally mm. offered me a entertainer position, which is a history making moment. Mm. At that moment, before I even won the contest, fresh off stage, he came up to me and like, "Who are you? Where'd you come from?" Because I never saw that before, mm. but I need to see that again. Mm. And life changing moment for me. Mm. Yeah. Wow, man, that's what's Nando up. is responsible for that. Yeah. So again, shout out to DJ Nando. So what was your whole set? Like, so you want to be starting something? Well, it was that one song because it was the it was the amateur oh, night contest. Gotcha. Remember on Wednesdays, just back in the day, on Wednesdays did they have the amateur night contest? One hundred percent, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it was that. So I danced to that song, and uh -huh. then they made me go head to head with like the other thicky thicky girl that was popular, or who you know made a lot of money or whatever. And I don't remember what song it was that we danced to, but whatever it was, I won. Got you. Yeah. So they just threw a wild card at y'all, and then y'all was to face off. Yeah. Gotcha. And you know, she was on her hands on my knees. Hands on my, you know, she was doing all that, throwing all that booty, but yeah. I stuck to what I knew. And yeah. yeah, yeah. I won. That's what's up, man. Mm -hmm. So when you when you got the when you actually got the position, what songs would you dance to? I had to dance to what, you know, what they was playing and I'd slowly learn. Oh, you don't get a chance to pick the shit. Well, in the beginning you working in a day shift, you get to pick when you go on stage, but I, I started working day shift. I would work every day, day mm. shift. So I just got acclimated with the sounds and with the music. And I would watch the other girls dance. And then slowly, you know, my peach started growing a little fuzz. Okay, I like that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. I, I got with the times. Got you, yeah. got you. As time went on, I became popular. And then the snack pack started. And then, you know, it's history from there. Okay. Now, why did you call that group the, the, the snack I pack? didn't do that. DJ Esco is responsible yeah, for this. You talking about Esco from um, yes. Esco. Future? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So there was, a, it It started with just myself and another girl. Um, we became Magic City's first feature whole group where they would stop the rotation at 12 o'clock and 2 o'clock and we would go on stage. Okay. Her name was Joe. Her name was Fierce. So Fierce decided that she wanted to leave. And I'm from Philly, so I went back home for a while. They had just opened up an Onyx up there, and it was like Philly's first booty club, and it was popping. So I went and got a few trash bags up there. All because I didn't want to go back into the general pop rotation by myself mm -hmm. and, and not have a pole partner. And, I'm, you know, we got to split that money even. Yeah. So I didn't want to have to do that. So when I came back um, after a few months, there was a group of girls. And by coincidence, they all were like five foot nothing, you know, little itty bitties. And again, I'm five five, but I'm still in that 100, 120 pound range, you know. And um, we wanted to be called something else that was very corny. What, what was it? Come on, come on. <laughs> we wanted to be the NPA, like the National Pole Association, because we felt like we was like that's the league, that. right? That's but, not that's but, cute. but no, but Esco NPA, started right? calling yeah. us the NPA. Yeah, but Esco started calling us Snack Pack because we was all like bite small, size. Yeah. So. Oh, cause y'all is snacks. Little. We was a snack. Yeah, Jack. Little, little, I, I take them like five. Yeah, that was what I it was. I'm, not, I'm over here thinking about some I'm shit. Familiar with that that that's all. around the time I start going to Magic City. Got you. Uh, yeah. Esk Eskimo was probably one of my favorite see, uh, DJs. Yeah. That's some new nigga shit. Yeah. Got you. Yeah. Yeah. Him and that's when I was going yeah. out. Yeah. See, yeah. Yeah. DJ X Rated used to strip with me. Are you serious? I'm dead ass serious. Wow. It was me, DJ X Rated, and uh, you know, Mr. Two Weeks Out? Yes. We, his name was the Mo trainer. Ed at the time. Yeah. We used to all dance at pinups. That is crazy. Yeah. But DJ oh, X Rated wow. had his hair blonde like goddamn Cisco. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, yeah. This one, I we, can't I see. We all, like, I can't see X old. without his without all his hair. Nah, he didn't. He didn't have that. He, the That's nigga just crazy. he turned into a DJ and just transformed into wow. DJ <laughs> DJ X Ray. DJ yeah. X Ray. So DJ X Ray is actually um, on the list of my top favorites as well. Yeah. Wow. So when I did my last dance at Magic City, he was the DJ that night. So that's, that's his voice that you hear. Got you. Um, over that footage. Yeah. Got you. Yeah, that's DJ X Ray. He, he DJed that night in. Okay. Without him knowing the playlist, you would think, listening to it, you would think that he really knew what was going on. Yeah. I'm actually about to re-release that. That's what I have happening right now. They re-release um, the DVD? Yeah, well, I, of course we can't put out a DVD right now because who has a DVD player? But, oh yeah, but yeah. I'm re. I have. I already. It's in post. It's you like ninety nine percent done. Or something oh, wow. like that. So or I'm putting it on Patreon. 
It's going on Patreon. Okay. But basically, that footage, the one minute clip that's pinned to my Instagram, is the mm -hmm. only footage that you can find of that evening, that whole entire night. That's you the only be footage on, on the internet. Not really. Okay. Not really. No. Was really not. <laughs> because you might see a titty or two. Um, you might see a titty or both. But that's it. Okay. Um, so what I did was I don't mind that. this. So the last dance, right? Yes. For people that don't know, or for those who don't watch P Valley. The last dance I definitely watched was, P Valley. Okay. So Mercedes. Not all the parts though. Not all, all right. The, not all the parts. Okay, you fast forward it through I that did, one I that one scene. Down. I walked out the room. And okay. Is, is you it did over? Like this? Is it <laughs> over? Is it over? <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, Mercedes and Autumn Nights. They are both the main characters. My the light skinned girls, Autumn yes, Night, right? Yes. They're crazy. So my life has been used as a muse for their storylines. And The Last Dance is something that I created in 2011 when I retired from Magic City. However, it became the storyline for season one and two. Hold on, cut. Time out. So is you trying to tell me... That I'm the real Mercedes? Oh, I thought you were about to say the autumn night. I was with the go to Well, I, I, it's, it's, a, it's a combination of both, and I'm a, I'll break it down. Okay. So starting with autumn night, yeah. she came to... Chuck Elisa yeah. in the middle of a storm running from an abusive relationship. Right. I came to Atlanta the day of Hurricane Katrina running from an abusive relationship. Who hit you? May he rest in peace because he's no longer with Oh, us. boy, if he, if he wasn't dead, I would. <laughs> yeah, he's who, no longer. I would he, he just so happened to be the guy that had uh, the heart attack while he was having sex. But let's stick to this story. We can go back to that. So um, uh, she also got hired at the Pink by winning the Air Merchant Night Contest. And then the whole first name, last name thing, right? So, and then with, with uh, Mercedes... She was the, the it girl of the club. Mm. She was the head of the trilogy. Mm. Most people think that the snack pack is only three people. It was really five, but it was only three on camera and three traveling because the other two girls were sneaky strippers and they couldn't do anything sneaky, outside of Magic City. Strippers. They people didn't know they stripped, so they couldn't put it on the oh. social medias and they couldn't go on Twitter and they couldn't travel with us because That's a thing. they was a sneak. Yeah, people sneak and strip all the time. That's the thing. Get they think they got night jobs at the, at the hospital and they at the club. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's a lot of sneaky strippers. Well, not probably as many anymore because of social media and cameras. But oh, back yeah. in my day when you couldn't bring phones in the club, when you couldn't be on your camera phone in the club, mm -hmm. oh yeah, it's a lot of sneaky strippers. So two of the snack pack was sneaky strippers. Um, she she took her um whole money and did what with it when she did. But first of all, last dance. I created last dance, it was a theme. It was not a, a thing. It was the theme to my retirement party. Because flash dance, and it was my last time. I did the whole pull the string thing, and so I made it last dance. To this day, not only with P Valley, um, my girl Jessica Dime, Last Dance was the storyline for her on uh, yeah. Love and Hip Hop, right? Yeah. Um, any random girl from any strip club, if they retire now and they're having the Last Dance, on P Valley, her whole first two seasons was about her having the Last Dance, and at the end, when she finally did it, she took that money and did what? Opened up a pole dance studio. That's right. That's what I did. Mm -hmm. I made twenty eight thousand dollars on Magic City stage, and I took that money and opened up a pole dance studio. So, so Mercedes or. Would you say that is her is her personality anywhere close to yours? Cause she kind of personality wise, yeah. no. no. What's the difference Maybe between you and Mercedes? Well, we both have that bossy bitch thing going for ourselves. We both yeah. have that confidence. We both have that drive. That I know I'm who I am. That you know, mm -hmm. bow down to greatness type of thing happening. Mm -hmm. You know, we both have that going. But I think the difference in me and her personality wise would be I'm a little nicer. Like, she was kind of a bitch. Yeah, she kind of a bitch. Like, even with that that couple yeah. that she had been paired up with. Yeah. And um, the girl. Oh, with, with Coach with coach and Farrah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like, d d is that something that, you know what I'm saying, also happened to you? You have a situation? Well, I didn't have a coach, but there has been a few times when I had a little situation happening with a couple here and there. So, wow. Yeah. Like, I had a threesome with a married couple before, of course. Yeah. Got you. But, they they actually hired you, like paid you ten thousand dollars a month. To come well, no, no, them? no. I didn't have a situation like that. More like a one off. Got two you. Off, flew me out somewhere. You know, had a little situation on the yacht. You know. Okay. One of them type times. Now, yeah. when you getting flewed out, what are the the, the, the qualifications? Oh, we just had this conversation. We're, yeah, me and Ivy. Me and that's what's up. Yeah. Okay, we in tune. So, um, <laughs> I so I need to be treated the way that I treat myself, or better. okay, and that's in any situation. Okay. That's flewed out. That's date. That's, you know, okay. in any situation I'm in with a man. How do you treat yourself? Exactly. So <laughs> I'm putting myself in first class. I'm putting myself in a five-star suite. I'm putting myself at, 
you know, a, a white glove restaurant. So I expect nothing but what I would be able to provide for myself. A white glove restaurant? Yeah. You What's know when they come in with the white gloves yeah. and they scrape the crumbs off your table with the little... No, I ain't never went in there. I didn't want to know. Yeah, yes, you have. Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I ain't been. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. Now, I'm not saying that I won't eat at the Cheesecake Factory, because I will. But not with no man. I'm going to take the kids to Cheesecake. I might leave I might leave them all and grab a little cheesecake on the way out to go home because I don't feel like cooking. So that's a play-play play date, okay. But yeah, but I'm not, I'm not, I'll go to lunch with my homegirls at Cheesecake. I'll eat it. But why not with but a I'm man? But I'm not what? going with a man. Why? What's the difference? I would rather, listen, first of all, I would rather us go grocery shopping and I cook us a love field meal. Well, see, why didn't you yeah. just say that? Yeah. Okay? Yeah, that's way better. I would rather yeah. stop at I would rather do that. Yeah. I would rather go to Farmer's Market and get us a nice cut of a fish and, and some vegetables and, you know, and a nice bottle of wine. And, you know, I would rather, food is an exchange of energy, for one. Yeah. And people don't realize, first of all, I worked at Fr TGI Fridays and Hands. I worked at a couple neighborhood pizza shops. And I know what happened behind them walls and them kitchens. And I don't want, I don't want any parts of that when I'm sitting at a table. Food is an exchange of energy. A lot of that food is frozen and pro processed. A lot of that food is pre-made and vacuum sealed. Like, I don't eat like that. I don't eat like that at home. So I don't want to eat like that in the restaurant. So that's the reason why I'm not you don't doing even eat fast food, right? I don't. Yeah. I haven't had fast food in 20 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wasn't raised on it. I wasn't, I didn't eat fast food until I was old enough to go get it, sneak and get it myself. I just listen, I just went to the, the uh vending machine over there. I, I got trail mix in my purse. Yeah. Like growing up, that's what we ate. Yeah. My mother was like an herbalist, so everything was fresh, never frozen, never out of a can. We made we cooked every meal, every holiday, every... I can remember eating out of the restaurant when I graduated from private school. That's the only time as a, a little kid I can remember. What's, at a what's your uh, favorite holiday meal? Like uh, the Easter, Thanksgiving, Christmas? I would have what to say Thanksgiving because you get a little bit of everything. Yeah. But I have a Christmas tradition that I make lasagna for mm. Christmas dinner. Yeah, that's... Yeah. So are you the one cooking on holidays and everybody yes. coming to your house? Yes. Okay. Yes. And Do I you get eat that from at other my mother's house. <laughs> I will eat at family members' houses, but um I get that from my mother. My mother was the one who it was her house that we did everything at and every meal, every birthday, every holiday. And I think that I am the daughter that took that on. And I have like my assistant, she's actually my niece. And I have my daughter here, they're around the same age. I have another niece that lives here that go to Spelman. Mm. I have a cousin that lives here that's a little younger than me. So I'm like the Atlanta matriarch of our little family. So, so you got everybody always, to move down here? Um, yeah, look, she like, yeah. So we having Thanksgiving at your house this year? We, uh, we, just, were, <laughs> we just was going over the menu, Thanksgiving at my house. I think this, this would probably be a year like, I can't even remember, but since I've been, I've been back in Atlanta, this would be four years. I've definitely cooked every year okay. back in Atlanta, but even at home, and, and when I lived in New York, when I lived in Philly, I would always cook Thanksgiving. I kind of, like, I, after my mom stopped doing it, I picked it up. And she's no longer here with us, so I feel that obligation to, you know, Do you eat carry pork? on the trip. Pork? Yeah. No. No pork? Never. Mm. Ever? No. Mm. So no hams, just turkey? Turkey. Yeah. Turkey everything. Yeah. Turkey no everything. No pork, no soda. No, no soda. white sugar. No high, 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 uh, high, what's fructose? It called? high fructose corn mm. syrup. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna drink my Dr. Pepper. <laughs> <laughs> so you have a daughter? How is she? A, a young? My or? daughter is 27. Oh mm. wow! Yeah. Okay, so she Gigi a grown she like woman. grew up with you. Yes, we grew up together. Wow. Absolutely. So like with your lifestyle, like how was it something that you were always open with it with your daughter, like, like dancing you, and everything? Yeah, mm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, again, I have a technical dance background. So I um, there was a time when she was about two or three that I danced with a team where we would get hired to do hair shows and fashion shows and talent shows and that type of, you know, like choreographed dancing. Um, my goals through, I danced through, I went to a high, uh, performer arts high school. So my goals through dancing and through high school was to be one of those type of dancers. I wanted to be background dancing on the Grammys and in music videos and on tours with Janet Jackson. Like that was my goals dancing growing up. Um, so I always had that type of dance happening in my life. Um, so as a baby, she would come to those rehearsals and she knew about those shows. And then once I started dancing at my first strip club and I had to explain it to her, she's probably like four or five. And I basically am like, you know, mommy dances in at one place every night instead of doing random shows. Like mm -hmm. I got like a, a steady job dancing in a club. And of course she didn't understand, you know, at that age. But as she grew, like I never really hid it from her. I never hid the money. I never hid the shoes. I came home drunk almost every night. Like, you know, I just lived my life. And then as she got older and able to understand, I was slowly explaining it to her. And then we moved to Atlanta and I became Gigi McGuire of Magic City. And she's in high school, and everyone knows. 
So it's like, it's not a secret, you know? And she's like driving to school in her Infinity and, you know, latest iPhone and all the camera equipment that she wants and can have because that's what she does. And it's just like, life is great. We have no worries. And Man, why my mama she could be a stripper? Yeah. That makes sense, yeah. yeah. And, and my, daughter, my daughter, I call her my little baby genius, but my daughter is highly intelligent. Yeah. So she, she gets it. She understands. I never sheltered her. I never hid things from her. Um, and I think the reason why she's the total opposite of me, like she's like a tomboy. She's not into makeup and, and heels. You know, she wear her little Crocs because she got a little 23 inch waist, but she's like really, you know, not this girl. She's not the, the weave, the makeup. She wears braids and locks. And like, um, I think the fact that I was so out and open with my lifestyle and how I lived, I think the more she saw it, the more she didn't want to be a part of it. Right. You get what I'm saying? Like, and so she grew to kind of be the opposite of me. And I appreciate that. It creates a good balance. Yeah. yeah. Cause she saw it be so open with you. She saw it as an option. She was just like, uh, I, yeah, I, I see it with not. my mom. And I'm just yeah. like, I'm good. My I'm daughter, good. she um, went to the School of Visual Arts in New York City. So she has a um, career in uh, film and photography. She actually created a production company. She directs music videos. She's actually doing the editing of my project. The last dance re edit that I'm doing. And, um, you know, she got her own thing going on, and I appreciate that. She knew at the age of 10, she did her first music video when she was 10 years old. Oh, and wow. she knew at the age of 10 that this is the career path that she wanted to take, and she stuck with it and saw it through. Yeah. So, and with her mama as a stripper. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like people would have, of course, the negative things to say, and family members would try to talk shit about how I got my money. But look at us now. Were you the, uh, the first generation? Uh, Entertainer in a strip club in your family, yeah. Like no aunts, aunties, nobody else did sisters, it. Nobody. What did your no. family think about it? Um, there was mixed uh, reaction, of course. You know, people who aren't really knowledgeable of what really goes on in the clubs, they see and hear, you know, from movie and entertainment. And usually, in movie and entertainment, it's drug addicted, got yeah. a pimp, don't take yep. care of their kid, uh, homeless, yeah. or yeah. and it wasn't that for me. You know, I had my shit together. And I excelled in what I did. And I remember, like, my older sister would talk shit about me, but at the same time, I was paying her rent and, and helping her with her children and buying groceries and buying them school clothes. So it's like, in one minute, you want to call me a whore because I got a sugar daddy, but on the, in the other minute, I'm giving you $1,500 to take your kids school shopping, and you're taking it without a blink. Right. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, the one thing when my mother, when I spoke to my mother about being a dancer, she was concerned about the whole, like, prostitution part of it. You know, and just don't be doing nothing crazy What's for wrong the with money. Well, you know, it can be dangerous. I'm gonna just say that. But um, what I told her was, and the whole thing about people not respecting you if you don't respect yourself, right? right. And what I told her was, as long as I respect myself and what I'm doing, I am going to be respected in return. You give what you put out. And one thing you don't have to worry about me making my money on my back is because I'm making my money on my feet. And in all reality, when you're in the club, and you just made three bands, and a nigga come to you and say, I got 500 for you to leave with me right now, you're gonna laugh at him. Yeah. Exactly. Excuse me? Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm gonna be offended. That's what I was about to say. You worked in pretty uh, high standard clubs. Yes. That got, yeah. It's not like, yes. uh, I don't wanna throw no other clubs under the bus, but when you get one of them Dominican girls $200 and they smashing in the VIP. Yeah, that, first that, of all, like Magic that. City don't even got yeah. a VIP. Yeah. yeah. But where we smashing at? Yeah. Y'all been in that place, it's as big as this room. Yeah. You see everything from every angle. So well, what am I doing? Well, uh, when I was 17. When they had the downstairs cracking? <laughs> I wasn't there. That yeah, was before well, my time. The looked completely different back in like 97, yes. 98. Yes. Completely that different. Was, that was before my time. I learned yeah. a lot about that during the uh, documentary as, as, as well. Yeah. Yeah. I can't wait for y'all to see this documentary. It's I'm, so I'm excited about Drake, this, Gigi. Uh, Drake Dreamville. I'm sorry, Drake's Dream Crew yeah. is uh, EP. Uh, Jermaine Dupree is an EP. Jamie Gertz, the co-owner of the Hawks, is an EP. It's a really, really good. They Damn, interviewed. GG. They got strippers from every decade. They got some of the first strippers from the '80s doing interviews. Wow. They got Dominique Wilkins, Shaq, yeah. Quavo, Future, Jeezy, Ti, Big Boy, Killer Mike. It's crazy. Yeah. It's yeah. such a good product, like project. I'm so. It's a life changing moment for me. So of course I got my pom pom shaking. But even if I wasn't so involved in the way that I'm involved, mm. even if my initial phone call was just the interview, mm. so even if it would have stopped there, I would have the same passion about this. Project. Got you. Not to be too you know much in your business, right? No, I want to know about them. I want to know how are you gonna get paid for. They gave you a large lump sum up front, or you gonna get like royalties? That you I your voice. I can't. I, I, can't. I can tell whole... you off camera, but okay. Yeah, I can tell you off camera. Though. Yeah, that's. That's interesting because I never heard of, you know, something like this. Well, yeah. of course we hear of it, but mm -hmm. I don't know nobody who do that. Yeah. So it's like. Yeah, no, it's it's definitely a very unique situation. It's a three-part docu-series. 
that um, the majors are very interested in. So it's going to be, you know, a big deal. And um, they put some good money behind it. It's, yeah. yeah. So With the names like that you uh, mentioned, I'm pretty sure it's going to definitely it's sell out. And this is the first do. time that Big Magic has ever sat down for a real interview. Yeah. So we get some oh, wow. real exclusive. Listen, I saw some of the archive photos. They got pictures of Tupac with Magic City strippers in the yes. 90s. Yeah. 100%. Like, yeah. He was in there with MC Breed them. Listen, it's crazy. And shout out Big Magic, too, for sure. Yeah, for that's sure. my dad. Listen, look. Yeah. Y'all see, I got fancy tattooed yeah. in my sleeve. Like, I will forever be a part of the brick and mortar at that building. Like, yeah. that. like no matter what I grow up to be, you know, no matter what I move on and accomplish in life, that will never take away from who I was and will always be attached to Magic City in that way. Yeah. You know, I will forever be Gigi Maguire from Magic City. I wasn't even Gigi Maguire until Magic City. Like, I was made there and paid there. So I will always have that same love. Well, pimp. For that place. <laughs> I heard what you do. Do you think you'll ever reinvent yourself and uh, change your name? or? So I'm Kafi. That's your real name. My real right? name. I yes. wear it around my neck and diamonds as a reminder oh, do that to again? always. Kafi. Kafi? That's your Kofi, name? Kafi, yes. Kofi? Yes. That's Kofi. awesome. Thank you. It's very unique, right? Yeah, yeah 100%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's my name. What's and your middle name? Nivella Suwa'u. Nivella Suwa'u? Nivella Suwa. Kafi Nivella Suwa. So you African? No. <laughs> no, it's it's Hindu. You yeah. Indian. My mother was, you know, my mother was very earthly. She was very calf, a hippie. very caftan, very okay. long hair, very barefoot all okay. the time. A bunch of plants and incense burning. Got yeah. you. Yeah. So I come from that life. Interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So reinventing myself. I have a book coming mm -hmm. and it's a story about my life told from a mental health aspect because mm -hmm. I've been through so many things death and trauma and abusive relationships. And, you know, I was homeless with a baby. My daughter's father was killed five days after her second birthday. I've experienced so much stuff. Um, I was a drug mule when I was 19. We spoke about that. Right, right. So I experienced so much, so many things, right? So many things that people, when I tell the stories, they think I'm lying, right? Mm -hmm. So many things that people could never even imagine having to deal with. And I've dealt with them at such a young age. Um, when I spent 90 days on Rikers Island, it made me realize that the bad things was happening in my life because I was a bad person. You did person. 90 days. I did 90 Rikers? days on Rikers Island when I was 22 years old for, for from the jobs? drug charge. So I oh, violated you, the probation. Okay. So the drug thing happened when I was 19. I was sentenced to probation. I violated the probation by moving across the city line. Okay. Like I left the city and moved to the county. Right. And when I went back to court, uh, they remanded me. So I had to do 90 days on Rikers Island. What's the reason. wildest shit you seen in Rikers in the, the female prison? You never hear about Rikers in the female side. The Rosie's house. That's what they call it. The Rose M. Singer building. Okay. So the wildest thing I seen was, for one, I had no idea what methadone was until I got to jail. Okay. So <laughs> for, you, for those of y'all who don't know, the listeners who don't know, methadone is the drug that they give you when you're trying to wean yourself off of heroin. Or That's when right. you have a heroin addiction. That's right. And you can't get heroin to keep you from getting dope sick, dope sick they give you methadone. So we're just all, I lived in a dorm. So we're all in a dorm and they called meth on the line and half the room got up and went to the line. So I'm like, well, where's everybody going? And the one girl's like, no, you don't want to go with them. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. And then I found out that those were the girls that had heroin addictions. Um, so that was one thing I learned. And then the other thing I learned was I was in jail with women who were from the ages of 18 to in mid 50s, 60s, right? A lot of their stories would start with, so yeah, we were smoking crack one night. What? How was so many young people smoking crack? Yeah. Oh to, in, to this day. Yeah. Nah. In New York, yeah. so there were so many young women addicted to drugs. And not, I smoke weed, right? You yeah. know, I pop shrooms, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, yeah. I, I had a whole Molly ecstasy run when that shit was cool. But you stop there. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Right? Shrooms, you know, you, you stop there. You don't go to crack. You don't go to heroin. You don't go to meth. I don't like, know how they do it. Ooh. Stuff so, that we think is so far out, people really be doing was it. normal, and I'm talking like, about this would be a really normal kind. Like the way we would be like, yeah. So I was sitting over here rolling up, right? No, the story. This one girl story started with her and her baby daddy was smoking crack. They started arguing and fighting. She stabbed him and left. Two weeks later, they found his body in the basement, and and she's in jail now, facing 25 to life. Wow. Excuse me, girl. And she looked like. She looked like us. She looked regular. Crack kills. Yeah. yeah. Regular as fuck. And Literally. she was young. She was probably like 25 years old, facing 25 in life. And she probably don't even because remember the shit. Because she killed her baby daddy. Yeah. She claims she ain't know that his body... You don't smell a body in the basement for two whole weeks in Queens, girl. Where the baby was Oh, at? she was still living mm -hmm. there, like... She lived over yeah. the body. You ain't go in the basement to wash no clothes or nothing for two weeks, girl. Oh, my God. You ain't trying to call your baby daddy. You and, knew that nigga was dead. Yeah. Oh, I don't yeah, like saying that. You knew nuts. that Andrew was dead. But yeah. What? So that was the craziest shit I learned at Rikers Island. But 
life changing moment when I realized that I was there because of the decisions that I was making and not that I was just wilding out because, you know, that happened. But during that time, I was living foul. I was I was doing some fucked up things. What's some fucked up things? I mean, I was a sugar baby. I was fucking all these married men. And I was like, you know, you not didn't do nothing. That's not that's not nah, fine. I was a bitch. I was a bully. I was I was mean for no reason. Yeah. I was a mean. All right. So I got fired from the very first club I worked at okay. because I hit a girl upside the head with a champagne glass. Oh, but urban legend turned it into a bottle. Yeah. And now I'm known as the cra I worked in white clubs. Yeah. So now I'm known as the crazy black girl that to knock you upside your head. You better tread lightly. So I ran with that. And I had all of the white girls scared of me and I would be punking them and shit. And that was wrong. So you was a strip club bully. You was one of the And bullies. I was wrong for that. Oh, oh, would you punking man. them out their bags and stuff too? Give I me your money, bitch. I wasn't <laughs> taking their money, but I was stepping over their toes and doing things that I shouldn't have been have, doing. Have okay. you ever bullied anybody that we know? Because we know you know a lot of I famous did, strippers. And I don't want to say her name, but I'll tell y'all oh, later. Okay. Oh my God. Because I don't want to keep talking about people in a negative right. way. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, that ain't really who I am. Have but anybody ever tried to bully you? Yeah. No. no, we not doing it. Never. Nah. Nah. Okay, now you come on. You we coming in. It. You coming into like a this. new city. I just Magic like this. City. So let me tell new you. New booty on duty. So let me tell you about me coming into Magic City. Okay. Me coming into Magic City, you have, as a dancer, as a new dancer, you have personality, you have body, you have talent. Mm -hmm. Right? When you got a little of all of that and you know how to conduct yourself and you a cool bitch, you're going to get treated that way. Sure enough. When you're quiet and shy and timid, then you might get walked over. Somebody might step on your toes and take your money, you know what I'm saying, if you don't do the right things. When you can't dance, ain't nobody paying attention to you on stage. When you ain't got no personality and you can't talk to these men, you ain't getting no money because right. you can't hold no conversation. When you ain't got no ass and you ain't got nothing to move, they probably going to breeze right by you, which is why I bought a body. So when you have... <laughs> When you can mark every check around the board, yeah. then you be, you know, you level up in the strip club world. So that's what I essentially did. Gotcha. I came with personality. I came with talent. You know, I was a little skinny, little pretty light skinned girl, but I was an A cup and I ain't had no booty. I was 110 pounds. So I went and bought some titties and I thought that that was going to do something and it did nothing. Mm -hmm. So I went and started getting my booty done and then things changed for me. Yeah. Okay, Period. so yeah. the Boots, titties didn't they do They count at the white clubs, but I the butt count at the, the black clubs. I just the titties was going to make a difference. The titties ain't make no difference. And Mikey told me. Y'all know Mikey. Yeah. Lil Magic. Yeah, Lil Magic. I told Lil Magic I was finna go back to Philly to get my titties done. That man said, why? He said, "Get what, for what? I said, because I always wanted titties. I'm going to get some titties. He was like, get your ass done. And I was like, no. Came back, da -da! nobody cared. I went and got that ass done. Earlier this year, like around like Jan February, January, something like that, I think I seen you do an interview said that you was about to get your breast done for the third time yes. in a couple of months. Yes. So that put us at the summer. And now here I didn't we are at the it. winter. I didn't Did you do get it. it done? No. Oh, okay, you didn't I'm do it. I'm going to. Okay. But here's the thing. When it comes to plastic surgery, you can't just accept surgery from any doctor that want to do it for you for right, free. Right, yeah. You mm -hmm. have, that is a very intense and personal relationship that you have to have with somebody that's going to put you to sleep and open up your body with a knife. Mm -hmm. And I just had the person that I was going to, what I was working with, I saw a couple different doctors and I just don't feel that connection to where as though I'm ready to go with said doctor. So. Would I have got my butt done if I was already making the money? No. No, I didn't want to do it because I knew it was some bootleg bullshit. Now, BBL is a thing now, yeah. right? And people confuse BBL with lipo. BBL is when you get lipo and move the fat to your butt. Mm -hmm. Lipo that is when you just move the fat and they throw it away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People see that you have a curvish, curvaceous body or you got a snatch waist and they automatically assume you got a BBL. I was 110 pounds. I didn't have no fat to move. So even if I had the money to do it at that time, what fat were they going to move? I didn't have any fat. Right. So I got illegal butt shots. I did not want to do it because it was illegal and I just didn't trust it, which is why when Mikey re recommended it, I said no and I went and got, you know, titties mm. instead that were legit. Mm. But um, eventually I folded. Now, is it something that I recommend now? No. People ask me for the number all the time. I don't got the number. I know the number by heart, but I ain't got the number <laughs> because I've had complications. I wouldn't wish that on anybody to deal with some of the things that I've dealt with. And other women have had it worse. We've seen Kay Michelle get hers removed. We've seen the horror stories of the pictures of people who boobs blew up and turned green and blue and all that old puss and shit. So, you know, I don't want to... Plus, it's illegal. I know people that went to jail for giving out the number because people died and shit yeah. like that. So, um, 
Do I recommend it? Absolutely not. Will I do it again? Absolutely not. But I also don't regret it because we are in control of our lives and the mm -hmm. circumstances that happen are the consequences of the decisions that we make. Point blank, period. Question, just out of curiosity. Yes. How much does a good boob job cost and a good ass job cost? What's the most I need to spend on my ass? Okay. Oh, my, my titties. Well, are we Not talking? Me, are we like talking booty I, shots or are we you, talking BBL? Uh, both. Okay. So I know people that spend thirty five hundred on their BBL. I know people that's, that spend twenty thousand on their BBL. Okay. What's the difference? The difference is, is you going to uh, Columbia or are you staying home and you going to Beverly Hills? Or Miami. Do or you somewhere suggest in Atlanta. I go to Beverly Hills? It's the same shit, but just location. So the thing about the location is that out the country, they don't have the FDA down their ass yeah. about restrictions. So they snatch you more. They go in a little harder. So people go out the country because, for one, it's cheaper. And for two, you get more for your money as far as the snatch is It's concerned. more exaggerated. Yeah, it's way more exaggerated. So you get the more cartoon shape if you go out of town, out the country, versus the United States doctor's not doing all that because... They go by the FDA guidelines of how much fat they can actually remove and what they can actually do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you get your bootleg doctor that's willing to do anything, then that happens out the country more. Okay. Yeah. And then everything is cheaper out the country. Got you. I've never gone out the country though, and I would not. More dangerous. Uh, yeah, I yeah. heard they took yeah. a girl kidney. I don't yeah, know if that story is true, but I did hear that. <sighs> but yeah, um, I would I would not recommend a girl to get her butt done. But I am pro surgery. Just do it the right way. Okay. Do your research. I'm definitely getting these titties done again. They 13 years old at this point. 14? 14. If you need somebody you to go with you, let me like, know. What, every 10 years? <laughs> well, okay, so when it depends on what kind you get. Um, silicone, uh, saline, 10-year shelf life. Uh, silicone, I have the gummy bear high-profile silicone. Um, they 10 to 20-year shelf life. At the 10-year mark, I got them examined, and they said that they were fine. Don't mess with them. The only reason why I want to get them done is because I just feel like I had something foreign in my body for so long. I just like it. Yeah, been I, I just want to refresh that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, but they don't give me any problems. I actually love my breasts. Like I love them. I like, love they're them perfect. too. Thank Price you. range with the breasts. That's about the same. So the first pair I got, I paid seventy five hundred for these. I paid about five thousand for. I hated the first pair. I went to like a celebrity doctor in Philly, and you know where all of the white girls was going that I worked with in the clubs, and um. I did not like them. I got them done over five years later. These I love. I went to Dr. Jimerson. Y'all know him as Dr. Curves, Dr. Right. J. Curves. Mm -hmm. I went to him before he was famous. I got these in 2009. I remember being in his office teaching him how to use Twitter. Oh, wow. That's how long ago <laughs> I got these done. And, and shout out to Dr. Curves. Um, he's, a, he's good. I, yeah. I, I felt comfortable with him because not only was he a young black doctor, he was the head of plastic surgery at the hospital that he worked at. So I was gotcha. impressed by that. And then when I met him in person, it was the vibes. And everyone in his office, it was, you know, yeah. I felt comfortable. Do you get referrals? Um, no. I mean, you know how long ago that was? <laughs> I ain't seen that man in about 12 years, since my, since my one year post up. Mm. So I feel like the club gets a bad rep because of what you said about what people see on TV, movies, or whatever. Yeah. But it seemed like for you, it gave you opportunity. It gave you money. Like, you know, it helped support your family. Do you, like, when girls ask you, like, oh, should I strip? I'm pretty sure girls ask you that now. Yeah. Like, what do you say to them now? Because, first of all, the club is different now than it, it was different. when you were doing it. It's very different. Um, In what way? The, the money. money ain't the same. The money is not the same. If I the money was the same, I would have went back. I say this every interview. I would still be at Magic City. I, I came back to Atlanta in 2019. My ass would have been back on that stage if the money was the same. So you saying that scribbles ain't like making. Back like wearing a four or five. I'm not saying that they're not making money. I'm saying it's not the same as when I was there. Got you. Yeah. It's not the same. No, it's not it's the not, same. It's not I make close. that on OnlyFans. Being a stripper on OnlyFans from the privacy of my own home. I got a pole in my room. Oh, shit. Okay. With the advent of like OnlyFans. Yes. Not even just OnlyFans, it's also social media because you got these girls putting their booties in the thong up on the sink for free. Right. So why would a man kind of pay to see some booty when he can scroll down his timeline and see it for free? That's Never true. About it like that. The, the, the internet, like everything is on the internet these days. You don't got to leave your house. Yeah, you don't gotta leave your house. So you you uh, you, you get you get you busting it wide open on uh, OnlyFans? Not wide open. Halfway open. But it's a little, I'm busting it. It's a peaky, okay. I thought you were on OnlyFans doing like rating dick pics. That's not only what I Whoa. do, but. Oh, okay. That is, I do, I do that's do a, dick that's pics. That's a part of the, okay. I do, I do dick ratings. Thanks for letting me know that, huh? I do, I do <laughs> dick Christ. ratings. I do them topless. Hey, what the yeah. fuck is that? I do them topless. So on, on my OnlyFans, it's very stripper, it's very ass and titties, it's very twerk video, it's very pole dancing. 
But then I take custom orders. So you can ask me to um, give you a personal like masturbation video. You can ask me Damn. for a JOI, which is jerk off instruction video. You can ask me for a oh, Wait, 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 cut, cut. What's a jerk off instruction video? Because I already know how to jerk off. <laughs> well, some guys want to be told. So I sit topless and I'll tell them like, oh, baby. I want you to grab it. Oh, yeah, spit on it, jerk it. I, I, Let me oh, suck wow. it. I, you know, as stupid as that sounds, mm, I do want to do it. I love the way that looks. You know, that <laughs> whole thing. <laughs> yeah. mean, I'm a little intrigued. I don't do as many of those, but because this is something that I just like, kind of added to my, my list of things you can ask for. But I definitely do a lot of dick rate videos. And I don't even like dick pics. Like, I don't want a dick pic from my man. If I'm fucking you, I, I, don't, I only want to see it when it's about to go in my mouth. So I don't need a picture. God, I need it in the moment. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Down boy. How many dick rates uh, probably uh, a week you probably think you do? Um, I think the most in that particular category that I've done in a week is maybe like 10. Okay. And how much you uh $150 a minute. $150 a minute. So if they a want minute. you to really go in and really oh, give so details. So, <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, sit, I sit with the picture on my laptop. Okay. And my phone is recording and I'm topless and I look at the picture and I rate it in the allotted amount of time. Oh. Yeah. And sometimes I go over the time frame because I just be talking. But yeah. So if you over talk, they got to overpay? No, I give it. I just get it to oh, them. Okay. Yeah. She's you, nice. You, she you a squirter? I am. You squirt on? Uh, no. On no. No. Okay. So I'm not giving porn. I'm not a porn star. I've never oh, been okay. a porn cool. star. Cool. What's the difference? Yeah. 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 So yeah. I'm not, I'm not giving, I'm not giving vagina. Gotcha. No I'm vagina. giving a little peek, but I'm not, you know, you're not getting like, here yeah. it is on the platter. You know what I'm saying? It's, you know, zoom in, maybe you can see a little something. That's just, I'm just being honest. No, I appreciate you know I thank you. Because here's the thing. Yes. When you put, you have to be conscious of that. When you put something on the internet, it's there forever. I'm not, I'm not giving y'all my pussy. I'm but sorry. If, if somebody screenshot that, right, can't you, don't OnlyFans got something to protect you from all that type of stuff? I heard my whole shit on Reddit. I don't know. I don't care. That's not yeah. true? Yeah. 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 I, yeah. Yeah. As, Man, yeah. who are you? <laughs> you know what you're talking about. It's DJ Period. Yeah. You already know. <laughs> oh my God. I love y'all. This is such oh, a good time. This is when you think you it's know somebody, you know? Oh, <laughs> so, uh, Gigi Maguire, yes. like, when you, when you, when you are being named this, right, uh, I'm, I'm to assume that Jerry Maguire also is your uh, one of your favorite well, movies? Well, no, that wasn't it. So um, Playboy mentioned Wayne right. earlier. And I don't really like to talk too much about him because I don't want people to think that I'm name dropping him in every, right. every interview because it's not really about him. It's about me. Hey, don't, this your yeah. story. Did, but did at you? the same, yeah, I'm telling my truth. Man, fuck them and there was a, No, and the, there was a time Man, when, when I would never niggas. say his name. Like mm. on lip service, I told a few stories that it was, and I always left it like a mystery, mm. you know, who is, who's the rapper. Mm. But it's Lil Wayne. But anyway... Um, we had a friendship. Mm -hmm. I would spend a lot of time in Wayne's world, which is his tour bus. I would, you know, be around. And um, we would listen to music. And he was rapping, and there was a, a bar, Wheezy Maguire, show me the money. And I repeated it, Gigi Maguire, show me the money. And we had a little like, oh shit, that's hot. You know, you should keep that. And it just so happened to be around a time when I was planning a birthday party. So um, I did the whole like me versus me, you know, Gigi versus Gigi Maguire, the introduction of Gigi Maguire, and I just ran with it. So here we are, all of these years later, I still, you know, I kept it in. I actually, when I did Last Dance back in 2011 and I put it out for DVD, I trademarked my name. So I own Gigi mm. Maguire. So it's technically, oh. it really is my name. And um, my tagline is Miss Show Me the Money. Because mm. okay. why not? You know? Do you feel like um, the strip club saved you? I know um, you said that you were like in an abusive relationship and you had to like get some money, you had to survive. So, um, I feel like my talent saved me because honestly, when I first started dancing, the money that I made that very first night was because I was talented. I made most of that money on stage. Yeah. I was scared to talk to these men in my panties, essentially. I didn't know these men and I'm in my panties. This is weird. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. But I got on stage and I danced and I made the majority of that money because of my talent. Mm. And as the nights went on and the weeks went on and the years went on, you know, things grew. Um, I stayed with the strip club. So the abusive, there was two different guys in two different times. 
Um, the first guy was pre-dance. The second guy was post-dance. Mm. The first guy was after the drug mule situation um, and prior to my first time dancing. The second guy was I had stopped dancing to bartend for this guy, and he had the heart attack while we was having sex. And, and he died. He did not die that night. Okay. Um, he spent seven days in regular, uh, seven days in ICU, five days in regular hospital, 12 days total with the heart monitors and all of that shit happening. And then when he got out of, uh, when he got out of, um, the hospital, he was on heart medication and blood thinners and all of that shit for the rest of his life. And I, he had constant, um, he had constant, um, doctor's appointments. And then he, it's like during that time he changed. This man. is when he become a, became abusive. It wasn't prior to the heart attack. It was yeah. after the heart attack is when he became abusive. And he accused me of cheating on him all the time. That's how it started. Yeah. And I don't know like where it came from, but um, it, 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 was, it was gradual. And then it got to the point where my life was literally in danger. And I packed up and I left and I came to Atlanta. And yeah. that's how I made it here. And it just so happened to be the day of Hurricane Katrina. Wow. Yeah. Did you ever have um, a relationship while you also maintained and, you know, finessed your sugar daddies and shit like that? Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Sugar daddies don't count. Sugar daddies don't count? They don't count. No. Did the relationship what? know about it? Uh, like you told no. your man, like, hey, I'm about to <laughs> no. make a quick 10 minutes. So it was, it was, uh -uh, on, it was on and off. Over this year. It was on and off and in between. Oh. So yes and no. I was single sometimes with sugar daddies and I was in a relationship sometimes with sugar daddies. I had sugar daddies probably for the first... Seven years, six years that I did. Yeah. So define oh, wow. sugar daddy. Normally an older <laughs> white man who wants to pay you for your time. You I must, had some black ones too, but okay. I was working in a white club. You don't always got to have sex with a sugar daddy either, right? No, but yeah. I had sex with most of them. Because uh, I wanted to. Uh, uh, money. <laughs> there, was a, there was a few. There was one in particular that I didn't have sex with because yeah. I wasn't feeling him that way. I've, I've personally, I've never, I've, I've always wished I had a sugar daddy. I've never had My it. My very I, first I, sugar daddy, I like. I tried him. once and it didn't work out. I love the very first one. I loved him. Like it was so intense with us that we had to end it because the, it was just too much. Intense. Yeah, we what's, were, what's the biggest thing a sugar daddy oh, ever wait, bought wait. you? What's intense first and then do the what's the big? What's intense? So it we spent so much time together. Uh -huh. Like we would be at one house while his wife was at the other house, and then the next weekend we would be at that house while the wife was at that house. He would fly me out on all his business trips. Like we started having unprotected sex. It just we spent a lot of time together. We created like a real relationship, and it just was it was too much. Got you. Yeah. He actually brought me to Atlanta for my very first time. We went to the Gold Club, and he spent like fifteen thousand. It was just me and him, and I was just like, oh shit. Oh wow. Yeah. Biggest thing a guy yeah, ever car, bought me. Car, bag. So house. my, I had a sugar daddy that paid for some breast implants, mm -hmm. but I didn't get them at the time because I didn't have a car. So I spent that money on a down payment on the car, and I told him that I can't be, I can't come back to the club with new titties in the back of a cat. Right. So I got a car instead, and then when I was able to get breast implants, I did. Yeah. So yeah, five thousand for some breast implants. Yeah. If your life was a movie, what would it be called? Insatiable. And why? <laughs> And who I'm would never you get satisfied. to play? I'm never satisfied. Never. No. I would want to play myself. Period. But if I had to choose an actress, um, what's this girl from Euphoria? Zendaya. 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 Yeah. She's a great actress. Yeah. She is. Yeah. She could dance too. She started oh, yeah. off dancing oh, on the Disney Channel. I didn't know that. There yeah. we go. Shake it up. And that works. Perfect. That was a show. Shake it up. Yeah. Shake it up. Zendaya. Got you. You used to watch it? Mm -hmm. Kinda. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. With my kids. Okay. Oh, okay. With my kids. Yeah. <laughs> What's one of the biggest misconceptions about you? One of the biggest misconceptions about me is that I'm a bitch. Like I'm mean or rude or like stuck up. I'm none of that. I'm so cool. I'm very homegirl. I'm very chilling with my homies. I smoke a lot of weed. I be, I be chilling. I've, I've never, uh, I've never heard that before. People think that I'm like one of these, you know, light skinned build the body girls who think that she's better than other people, and mm -hmm. I've never given that. Like, if you really know me, I might kind of have that look, but it does not give that when you actually take the time to get to know me or talk to me. The I am a superhero. Like I am so giving and so generous, and I pour into people. Like I, I love a stranger before I like a friend. Like I am willing to help those in need. I will give you the shirt off my back. People have seen me do it. 
You know, I'm always willing to help. Friends, family, like that's me. I'm going to do what I can to help. I'm a provider. I'm a caregiver. Like I have that. That's just me and my gut. I get that from my mother. So to say that I'm rude or stuck up is people say that about me before they get to know me. Or they'll meet me and get to know me and be like, I didn't think you would be like this. I thought that you would be, you know, that way. And it's just like, I'm not that way. I hate people like that. When they meet you and like, oh, I thought you were going to be a bitch. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you thought that because you felt bad about yourself. Like, you wouldn't even know me to know this that you thought I was going to be a bitch. Times. Like, this, this is hey, normal you better, come on, you better release it, money. Yeah. <laughs> That's just the truth. People be insecure and then they take it yeah. out on you. Like, I do I feel like people deflect you. their personal feelings upon other people in, in a negative way. What's your uh, zodiac sign? Gemini. Uh, oh, God damn <laughs> I'm a May Gemini, though. May, oh, yeah, May's are way better than I'm June. a May Gemini, May 23rd. Yeah. You one of them motherfuckers. He is. He loves... You a Zodiac nigga. Uh, well, kind of. You I was a Zodiac nigga. Until I dated a Gemini Come and on. seen how fucking crazy they were. Was she a June Gemini? A June Gemini, yes. Those are the crazy ones. And the men. Nigga, you going in with this, too. Man, come oh, on, man. I got uh, hot water poured on me in my sleep. Fucking around with a June Gemini. Damn. It wasn't hot enough. Why was you? Not it wasn't hot enough. It woke no. me up. Oh, okay. Why did, why did that happen to you? We'll talk about that on another time. <laughs> Holy cow. Because it was a Gemini. A Gemini, <laughs> man. What you do to her? June Geminis, because I ain't going to lie. One of my best friends, Cash, he a May Gemini. And I know a couple of other May Geminis, too. They all cool. Yeah, we but cool. like them June ones. The June Cancers? This nigga here. Okay. June cancers are a little bit worse than July cancers, too. Yeah. My daughter's a it July cancer, June. but her mama is a June cancer. It's mm. that, it's that transition like. of the Ugh. season. Yeah. Six months? That, Six. Mid, that midway through that transition of the season. <laughs> you hear these niggas? What's your sign? I'm a Sagittarius. Oh. Yeah. Look, like she sad. disappointed at your shit, too. What's your birthday? December 6th. Okay. 60-day fiance was a Sag. That's what mm. I refer to him as. 60-day fiance? 60-day fiance. The guy that I was engaged to for 65 days. 60-day fiance is what we call wow. him. Yes. Yeah, we got a couple too. minutes. We want to end out with the situation ship. I got some questions yes, for yes, you. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Let's choose like two or three. Okay. Okay, I got to get something good. Okay. Uh... Okay. Okay, let's let's do this one. What was your exit? What would you say your... um? What would you, what would your exes say is your biggest flaw? How have you tried to fix it? Mm. My biggest flaw from an ex that I'm spoiled. And how have I tried to fix it? I haven't. <laughs> I spoil myself. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. If you can maintain it, ain't nothing wrong with being spoiled. Okay. And, and, and when you're spoiled, that's not just a, a, a monetary or a material thing. It's a mindset. You spoil, your, you spoil yourself with love, with pouring into yourself, with doing for yourself. You know, and, you know, I, 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 time, I, I hold energy. myself at a high standard. I take yeah. care of myself, you know. Okay. So, yeah. Let's see. You see your ex and a complete stranger drowning. Who would you say? <laughs> Depend on which ex. Hmm. Your most recent. 60 Day Fiance. It ain't no beef. I'm going to save him. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's no beef. That's nice. No That's beef. nice. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Last... I just found out who your, 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 your fiance was. Which one? The, I mean, 60 Day? Yeah. You know who it is? Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little thrown off by it, though. Why? Uh, because he don't seem like the. Like the what? Like the, the settling down type. Mm. That's what. It, listen, this is what he said. I went to his birthday for. party by accident about two, a year and a half ago. This, me this. and Pippin Ken, and the because uh, uh, at um, his club and um, mm -hmm. the one on the south side. On the south side, yep. Yeah. On the south side, and man, <laughs> walking in the dough, it's like the boom boom room, mm. and it's like a, a it's like Hooters meets. Fucking visions or some shit. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And I'm thinking to myself, and he come in there, and all the girls is going crazy and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yo, Ken, if I was him, I would be fucking every bitch in this mother. So he, you know, in his words, he's over, he's 53 years old, and he's ready to settle down, and he wants to marry, and, you know. That sounds like a pickup line. 
I mean, that's just what he said. Okay, got you, got you, got you. Okay, last one. What is your definition of cheating? Anything that you would not do in front of your significant other. Anything that you got to sneak and do. Anything that you know they're going to be mad at. Anything that you just ain't going to outright do with, with your chest out in front of your significant other. You shouldn't be doing that shit. It's cheating. You a sharp motherfucker, boy. You be on this shit. That's the Period. truth. As soon as you start deleting messages, that's when you that's when Anything, the cheating starts. Physical or non-physical. <laughs> if you got to delete you the can, message, that's You cheating. can look and be cheating in the way you just looked at somebody. If you wouldn't look at that person in front of your significant other. Yo, GG. I really appreciate you coming to New Jack Thriller City, man, and you know what I'm saying, taking this time out with us. Yeah. And I hope it won't be the last time. I listen, I ain't, I ain't that far. Okay, you know there it saying? is. I just, you just a telephone call away. Phone call, text. There it is. You know what I'm that. saying? I'll be there. Okay, there it is. <laughs> Anything you want to say to New Jack Thriller City before we get out here? So I just want to remind you guys that I have this last dance remastered that I am going to be releasing any day now. I am actually going home right now to look over the footage to approve it to be completed and done with the editing process. So that's going on my Patreon. I'm also giving, so I get a lot of, and we talked a little bit about this earlier, I get a lot of, can you help me DMs. I get a lot of, really? I want you to mentor me. I okay. get a lot of, I want to dance and I don't know how. I get a lot of, can you coach me? Can you train me? And guess what? What camera is it? This one? The game is to be sold, not told. Okay. Okay. So with that being said, that's going on the Patreon as well. Okay. I am working on that um, right now as we speak. And I'm giving my game. I'm giving what we call Gigi's Gems, mm, okay? Mm. Because I've been in this game for a long time. And not even just with strip. I am a 44-year-old woman who's been in these streets since 45, the age of 15, five, okay? I've been in these streets for 30 years. Okay. And I didn't spun the block in reverse a couple times like Diddy in the Hypnotize video. You feel yeah. me? So I know what I'm doing. And, you know, I ain't no hater. I ain't no gatekeeper. Baby, you want it, I got it. It's going to cost on you, though. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I'm working on that. 45. Um, 44. Yeah, 44. Um, I have a book that I'm working on as well. Again, from the mental health standpoint of, you know, I've been through this. so many things. Okay. And this is how I, this is me now. So you would think when you've seen all of the shit I've been through, you would think that I would be beaten and bruised and broken. And I am not. I am the opposite of all of that. I am thriving and I am living my best day every day in, in competition with yesterday. And that's it. Um, so I'm, my writer is actually a psychiatrist. So, you know, it's giving Gigi Maguire's, you know, life and, and, and tidbits into that. You know, we're going to protect the innocent because it's a secret society. Always acts as trust. But I'm telling my story, like you said. And um, so that's happening. I just had a meeting with the writer yesterday. We have the Magic City Doc coming. Um, I have a podcast coming in the works. And you doing your own? I am finally doing my own podcast. Okay. Something that I wanted to do when I moved back to Atlanta. But, you know, timing is everything. Uh, that's what it's all about. Yeah. So um, Show Me the Money is the name of it. Mm. Coming soon. And You don't have a favorite scene out of this movie. Jerry Maguire? Yeah. I mean, when he's screaming in the phone, shout me the money! <laughs> Why wouldn't it be? Yeah. <laughs> Silly me. Yeah. When he dancing, and he in the kitchen or something? Yeah. Show me the money. Yeah. So, yeah. But, um, that's pretty much it. Podcast, book, most importantly, this Last Dance remastered, the re-release, because people want to know about it. And, and I did, like, an updated, like, where are they now? What have I done? What did I do with that $28,000 I made in 28 minutes? You mm. know, where, what, where have I been? Why did I close in my post studio? What am I doing now? What's up with lip service? You know, I did reality TV. I did a lot of things. I'm the muse of P. Valley. I got a lot to talk about. Man, so why you I share all of this. So I had the opportunity to do Love and Hip Hop first season, and the same ex that made me quit did not want me to do it, and I didn't do it because Mother of him. Motherfucker, this nigga took you away from us. But here's the thing with Love and Hip Hop, okay. right? I was supposed to be K. Michelle's friend, like how Arian was Mimi's friend, okay. right? So I wasn't going to be a cast member, for okay. one. I was going to be a, start out as okay. a friend to the show, right? Um, K. Michelle's manager at the time is my cousin, so it came through him. Um, but my ex was very close with Mona, and I guess when she realized that he was the person I dealt with, she ran it through him, and he was like, absolutely not. But I ended up doing reality TV years later. Um, I did Beyond the Pole on WeTV during mm -hmm. COVID, season two of that. That's with uh, Shantae Page? Yes. Shout out to Shantae. I love Shantae. Yeah, she's amazing. So I would rather... That was 2012. I would rather... That 
was that long ago? Yeah. No, 2012 was Love and Hip Hop. Oh, so okay. I would rather present this version of myself okay. to the masses than that version. And not to say that that version didn't have her shit together, but this version of me, I have my shit together on a whole nother so level. So you wouldn't mind revisiting that Love and Hip Hop concept? I, I don't really fit into Love and Hip Hop. I'm more Atlanta Housewives. Oh, okay. All right, now. You know what I'm Talk your shit. I'm, 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 I'm grown. Okay. I'm a grown ass woman. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So I'm more on an adult level. I feel like loving hip hop, if you're not an artist, um, you're dating an artist, and I just feel like I'm past that stage in my life. Oh, no more artists. Well, I'm not to wouldn't say that I would never date an artist, but I feel like loving hip hop is more of a, 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 a younger okay. more is more it's of a younger more of a younger Younger thing, younger crowd. I can dig it. Yeah, I can dig it. we grown in sex. You field, contemporary. Yeah. I mean, I know I got my pink docks on like a six year old, but we grown in sex. I'm glad field. you said that. We grown in sex over here. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. So, yeah. you, so that, that uh, we we didn't do that. Um, we got we got to do it. Can we can, can we can we do it real quick? Okay, and my business. Hey, it's about the school clothes time. Show them your school clothes, Playboy. Okay, okay, okay. Let me. <laughs> Come on now, come on now, come on, pro. You better work. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> Tell them what you got. Some light today. Well, matter of fact, I ain't gonna sit on my uh. Yeah, some light. No, it uh, ain't. These Jordans. The, uh, <laughs> these the motherfucking collabs. The uh, what these what's these shits called? The ain't the 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 a mama Marie some shit. I don't know. That just made an extra thousand dollars. Period. Um, <laughs> some, some purple jeans. Like I said, some light. I got this uh vintage. Look, distress sweater from Zara, none too big, but um, Cartier Santos, a uh, little ice. That's it. I ain't got no hat on today, but you know we still chilling. There you go, yo, money. Okay. Show me school clothes. All right now. <laughs> Damn. All right. Now that's everything. That's everything, girl. You. Don't you shit on our outfit. <laughs> um, boots are from Macy's. I think I got them on sale. I think it was like fifty dollars. Um, and <laughs> then smart. the dress is Naked Wardrobe. That's Naked Wardrobe. I love Naked Wardrobe. They got the best basics. They suck I love you in. Naked Wardrobe. They suck you in. Okay, um, you talking nasty? <laughs> yeah. Okay, my turn. GG, can you show? Cause you a fashionista. Yeah, yeah. Okay. God damn! Don't okay. hurt him, Hammer. Don't hurt him, Hammer. <laughs> Did you say get your camel toe together? Yeah, you know, mama got to get that picture. God damn, Gina. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> so I'm gonna keep it 100 with y'all and tell y'all that this outfit was inspired by this dumb ass pink blingy hat. And the reason is, is because my lace has expired. And when I leave here, I'm going straight to the house and my girl pulling up and I'm finna get a new install with some fresh bundles. I'm going back to the sewing. I'm going back to bringing my edges out because I tried this lace front thing, y'all, and it ain't working for me. So it wasn't even no trying to save it. I honestly saved it a couple days ago for lip service, but I couldn't even bring it to life today, y'all. And for real, it ain't. What's happening to Mother here is the reason for the rest of it. So, you know, we went from the hat to the boots and threw a little something in between, and, you know, here we have it. And pink is my color. So, you know, I'm a Barbie girl living in my Barbie world. That but is. I'm going to keep it 100. All right. G the hat the is for the y'all. Let's get it. <laughs> hey. Let's take some pictures. This was so much fun, y'all. Yeah. Right here to take